We are back in Texas, baby, after Vegas, some side trips, the boys are back. We're here at Texas Cardo's playing yet another esteemed 1-3 live stream. We play aces really weird in this one, and we, one of us, gets it all in in the very last hand. Stay tuned. Let's do it. Let's go. First notable hand of the stream for us, we see an early position $10 open and one call. Eric, one of the tighter players at the table, raises in the cutoff to $50. We're in the big blind and peel the jellos. Kind of an awkward spot here. If we jam, we have the opportunity to pick up $70 uncontested. However, there are two different people in the hand who can possibly have us beat, the original opener and Eric. If we call, we have a bit of playability post-flop and can either flop an overpair or get away cheaply on a bad board. While I don't do this too often, I decide to call the $50. If Pat jams, I'll likely just have to fold. It doesn't come to that though, Pat calls and Royal T makes a rather tight fold, which turned out to be right, and we head to a flop which is miraculous, ace jack 5. It checks over to Eric who bets $60, although raising seems nice, this board favors him, and it'll be pretty hard to have many bluffs here, so I just call. Pat folds and we're heads up to the 9 of clubs on the turn. What an action card, giving Eric now a top pair and a flush draw. I check it again, and this time he bets 150. There's only one move at this point. I take a deep breath and put the remainder of my stack in there, and he calls rather quickly. We're off to one river card and one river card only, needing to fade a few cards, and it peels off. The king of hearts, we scoop in a nice double up early on in the session. First hand for me is a pretty good one. Pocket aces under the gun and we go for the limp. These live stream games are crazy. There's tons of raises, tons of three bets. So I'm not too worried about this limping around. Under the gun plus one limps with a hand I did think would raise. Ace king of clubs and the hijack makes it 20. Folds back to me. We got our raise. We go for the limp three bet to $85. It gets to Pat and under the gun plus one who thinks about it then rips it all in for like $500. Hijack folds, we snap it off, and we are in a dream spot in a $1,000 pot, off to a flop, which comes 4-4-5 four, four, with one club, but the seven of spades on the turn, eight of hearts on the river, gives us the double up right off the bat in this stream. Let's go. For my first turn of the night, we have Jack-10 of diamonds under the gun. I call three, which I'll be doing a lot tonight in early position. There is a limp from the hijack. Cutoff raises to 12 with the seven deuce, playing the seven deuce game. Willie makes the call on the button. I make the call, think about three betting, but decide just to fly here because we're gonna get calls from the other two players. Trying to hit a big hand. Flop comes five, eight, seven, four ways. I check it on over and it checks all the way over to the button. Woodley, who puts out a bet of $20. We have a gut shot to the nine straight, so I make the call and as does the hijack and the cutoff with seven deuce makes the call as well with a pair of sevens off to a turn which is the nine of diamonds this is such a nut board i mean think about all we can get value from there's sets there's worse straights than us any six makes a straight we do not want this we just lead out for 85 dollars and both people with just the seven make the fold but woolly snap calls with his 10 so off to a river heads up this time which comes the five of spades doesn't improve him I think with just a pot size bet, I rip it all in. Unfortunately, he doesn't have anything, so he folds. But with a couple different rivers there, we really could have got paid on the next. This hand, we see Llama open up the action in early position to $15. I'm next to act and peel Queen Jack of Clubs. I raise to 55, it folds back to him, and he makes a call. Flop comes ace high with a club, and when he checks it to me, this is definitely a board worth betting. I bet $40, and he calls. Turn is another good card for me, it's a king. He checks it again, and I can have plenty of strong hands on this board. No point in slowing down now. I bump up the action to 110, and Llama eventually decides on a fold. We scoop in this pot. From the best hand in the game to the worst, we got seven deuce here, playing the seven deuce bounty though, so we can get a lot of money if we win with this hand here. Let's use our tight image and get some respect with a $20 open, almost seven X, and the cutoff calls and Woodley calls. So we're off to a flop, we're gonna have to go to war, and it comes King Jack six rainbow. I'm gonna go for one C bet and then shut down, that's my plan, so I C bet two thirds pot, Pat calls, so I think it's time to give up. The turn is the three of spades. It goes check, check. The river's the king of clubs. It goes check, check again, and he shows 
deuces. Yeah, I definitely did not expect that to be calling a C bet against me and my image, but Pat in the Hat is a stone cold killer, so nice hand, man. We are in a fun game, and there is a six and twelve dollar straddle on this hand. In DFS, the first to act makes it fifty dollars with king queen offsuit. Okay, so we got the same hand, but ours is suited. I just flat called. It's a pretty big bet, and actually the rest of the players fold. So what we won were ISO and in position. Flop comes six seven three with two diamonds and one heart. He does just check it over to me. Um, he could have ace king here, maybe a couple other traps, so I decided to just check it back. The turn is the jack of spades, and when DFS again checks it over to me, I really don't think he has a big hand here. I don't have any showdown value with king high, or I really shouldn't, uh, given his range, betting $50 preflop. So I put out a bet of $45 as a bluff, and thankfully... DFS folds, so that's good news for us. Moneymaker had a couple words to say about it. Would have liked to see a, a step from, uh, from Frankie, Frankie on the check flop, too. already yeah. on the flop. And uh, I think uh, yeah, latest on the turn, he has to start uh, bluffing here. You, 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 you don't want to show this down against the random ASI. And uh, yeah, you, you really have to put some pressure on your opponent here. Yeah. He says once check two in the flop, that's when I should start my betting. And I think that makes a lot of sense. This hand, there's a $10 open, a few calls, and I called pocket fours in the small blind and head to a multi-way flop of queen six four. Lovely. I check it without much thought, but I think this board, I could start experimenting with some leads. I didn't think of it in the moment, but looking back, I think that could have been cool. Anyways, I check it and it checks all the way around. Turns of five, now there are plenty of draws to charge, so I bet pot for $45. Pat in the hat makes a call with his open ender and little do I know, DFS Brat just smashed his gut shot. He raises to 225. When he does this, I already don't feel great. It's a rough spot, but I eventually decide on a call. Playing the river somewhat hesitantly, we see a juicy eight as the last card. I check now and DFS shoves for $550. On one hand, this is certainly a good card for DFS to bluff on. On the other hand though, there are almost no possible bluffs in the turn that didn't get there on the river besides a flush draw, which I assume he probably bets on the flop when it checks to him at some frequency. Anyways, it just felt like I wasn't good here enough of the time to call, and I quickly let my cards go. Hmm, I'm not sure about the turn here. What do you think, Jonathan? When you get called, that's fine. When you get raised, ugh, not so fine. I realize that in some very weak, very tight, very straightforward games, you may actually be able to fold to this raise, but I don't think you can ever fold at TCH in this scenario. So I would call and then probably call for only 550 more on the river on all safe rivers, which are rivers that do not complete a straight or a flush. This time, though, one of those comes, and at that point, I think you probably do have a pretty easy fold. From pocket aces to seven deuce, now it's PLO bomb pot time. We are hitting all ends of this poker game today. $10 each we all put in and the flop comes jack 10 seven rainbow. We've got king queen seven seven. With bottom set and an open ender to the higher end of the straight, I decide to lead for $30. Rosie wakes up with the nuts and pots it for 190. Our cards, as you can see, haven't scanned yet, but did you guys want to take a wild guess at what I have here? Um, Woodley tank calls and our cards finally scan and yes, we have the stone cold cojones. Poker Llama calls. Back on a me getting such a good price, I decided to peel a turn card. The crazy thing is, even with the absolute nuts, we are in last place equity wise to win this pot. Look at those percentages, so wild. The turn, the king of spades dropping us to 0% equity. We pick up a flush draw to go along with everything else we've got going for us. This is where things get weird. I know Rosie and I know he's got 9-8 for the flop straight. That no longer is the nuts though. If he has a 9 and I have a queen, that means we both should block the first and second nuts now being ace-queen and queen-9. This is a card I can put max pressure on and probably force some folds from everything but the nuts. And if we get called, we're plenty live. I pot it, which is all in for $650. Rosie sifolds his straight and unfortunately we see Woodley just drilled his open ender. He quickly puts his money in and Llama folds. 
We see we're still a 40% chance against Woodley here and decide to run this $1,400 pot one time. Any king, spade, jack, 10, or seven will win me the pot. The river rolls off, an ace of clubs. We river the nut straight and end up chopping this one up against Woodley. Happy to at least get my money back on this one after going through such a roller coaster of a hand. Wow. We got a really good hand this time. There's a $6 straddle on. We see Pat in the hat, limp for $6. Another gun three, limps for six. And Woodley and low jack makes it $20 to go. We're on the button with ace queen of diamonds, a beautiful hand. I put in a three bet, of course, but my sizing's a little smaller than what the commentators asked for. They said something about a little bigger, like around 100 uh, or 90, and I want 80 here. I don't have a smaller sizing. Uh, not even 3x. Um, the reason behind the small sizing is I feel like I actually can bait someone into jamming from behind, one of the limpers into jamming, and then I'll have an easy call. So I want them to think of the small sizing as weakness. Um, but nothing like that happens. We see a call from under the gun 2, pat in the hat with the king 4 suited. Tommy folds in between and Woodley makes the call as well. So going three ways to a flop, which comes four queen two with two spades. So really nice flop for ace queen. When it checks to me, I put a small bet of $80 out there. We want to get called by small pairs lower than a queen. That's why we go small here. Under the gun two makes the call with his four. So perfect. We got Pat in the hat in there and Woodley folds his nothing. Turn comes to six of clubs. Checks over to me and I think there's only one possible sizing here. We want to make it polar, right? So we're going to have ace king, which would be bluff, and we're going to have ace queen, which is going to be value. He doesn't know that. He has no idea which one we have. We go all in, put him to the test, and pat in the hat. He puts in the call. So a great, great spot for me. Let's go to the river. Value. Max value from ace queen. Oh, that's all the way up. King. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's brutal. Thousand dollar pot. Oh, that's brutal. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yikes. Wow. <laughs> gets max value, gets a four to call on the turn, shoving for max value. And the king on the river, gonna get Pat in the hat, the win here. Oh, you got us max value. <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, we laugh off the bad beat. I really like the way I played the hand though. This hand we see Poker Llama open to $15. We have Jack Tennis Spades in the cutoff and we wanna get the button out of here secure position and isolate a player with a wider opening range so we go for the three bet with this hand in this spot to forty dollars the button cold calls of course and ace five offsuit out of position finds the call as well so we got to go to work here the flop comes jack four deuce with two clubs we do flop top pair we see bet it for fifty dollars and naturally pocket threes finds the call uh, llama follows along as well with his gutter and overcard the turn is the lovely ace of diamonds. It checks around. The river's a five, giving Pat his runner runner straight with threes. Uh, and two pair to Llama. It checks to Pat, he bets 155. Llama calls, we let it go. Uh, and that's that for us. Okay, this hand is really, really fun. Under the gun one with pocket aces. I call six, like I've been doing all night. So this is not, this is a very balanced play, guys. Under the gun two, Poker Llama, the guest of the night, he calls as well. Jello, he calls, and then the pro in the low jack, Giacomo, makes it $50 to go. Very fair, he's raising over the limpers, very fair. Folds back to me. We got the pro right where we wanted him. I, I know that if I raise over the top of this bed, it's gonna look very strong, but that is the right traditional play. However, I just make the call and pause the video real quick and let me explain why I just call here. First, because of the end of the stream dynamic, I thought the people behind me could get ahead, have a little extra spaz factor and rip it all in if I just called the 50. Obviously, if I raise Giacomo's bet, it's gonna look super strong. It's gonna look like I limped pocket aces under the gun and re raised like that's the most traditional play ever. So I didn't wanna just show my hand face up and I thought maybe he's trapping a big hand. He also limped earlier position, thinking that someone's gonna raise over him, just like I did. So hoping that he had a big hand as well, I just thought I could trap him. Worst case, if everyone calls, we're going off to a flop with a low SBR and I can just rip it all in as a lead play or as a check jam. So those options are still available. Guys, I look like a genius. When Poker Llama rips it all in behind me, we've spotted this hand on Poker Llama's Instagram. It's a very fun hand. We see Jack and Giacomo quickly snap fold and I snap call. 
Our trap and retrap works perfectly. Let's head off to a flop. Six, five, seven. We're good. Turn queen, river, king. Yes, aces hold. And we double up to in the night. Poker Llama, thank you for coming. Guys, check him out on TikTok, on Instagram. We had a great night with you. And I'm sorry it ended up the way it did. But we had a blast. Let's see how much we cashed for after this. Into the game for 500, out for 555. Into the game for 700, out for 1619. Into the game for 500, out for 999. That's All three of us in the black. Bang, bang, bang. Three for three. Leave a like. Subscribe. Comment. Peace.